Welcome to the Invincible CEO channel. My name is Didi Pavlik and I am the Invincible CEO and this whole channel is here just for you. All these videos are here just for you because I want to see you manifest with ease. Why? Because I know you're already doing that. You're just not aware that you've been doing that your whole entire life. And when we start to bring consciousness into something that we have been doing automatically, the conscious mind can cause a little bit of havoc. It wants to be in control. It wants to take over. It wants to be a good assistant to you. So in doing so, sometimes it makes it a lot more difficult than what it really needs to be. So we, we bring wonderful awareness in the now moment so that you can act in inspired presence, right? Presence and awareness is the one-two punch of consciousness. It's the one-two punch of manifestation. So it, today in this video, I want to see you win. I want to see you win big. I want to see you win all the time. They're not just words I say. That is truly my heart, my heart to you. We're going to talk about eliminating resistance. This is episode nine in our deep dive into the now series it was chosen by our amazing wonderful community here at the invincible ceo you guys rock i am so thankful to be able to bring you new videos every day to help you on your manifestation journey and i deeply appreciate all of your comments all of your interactions so thank you for liking the videos subscribing to the channel sharing the videos absolutely love it joining our community participating in our three-day manifestation events uh, our challenges just loving every part of this can't believe this is what i get to do every day i have totally created a life that i get up in the morning i can't wait to jump out of bed to do the next thing whether it's meeting with clients you guys are absolutely amazing i am loving our client sessions i'm loving our clarity consults just loving every step of the way. And how I'm speaking about what we're doing here is what I want to hear you, how I want to hear you speak about your life, whatever your topic is, whatever your passion is, whatever your gift to this world is. Let me help you bring out your gift to this world because there was a time where I didn't think this was possible. And it's mind blowing to me how looking back at all the different bridge of incidents, how everything unfolded. So I really want to take you a deep dive into eliminating resistance because there isn't any. That's <laughs> all right. I, I let the cat out of the bag. There isn't any resistance. We create resistance because we think that in order to achieve an outcome, somehow it doesn't have greater value if we don't struggle for it, if we don't work hard for it. And that's okay because if you're coming off of the, the reality where you have to work hard for your, your goals or you have to struggle and sacrifice for your goals, it just goes to show you how deep each reality goes in and of itself because they're meant to feel real. You're meant to come here and have a human experience where you're feeling these things. You're experiencing these things. And we've said before, root chakra is all about belonging. It's all about survival mode. It's all about repetition. So now we're moving into sacral chakra creation where it's just about the transaction, but it's not about the transaction. It's that, that funny little paradox that we need the ceremony, the ritual or the transaction to know that we've connected the two minds together but it's not the be all end all thing, right? It's not about truly doing the transaction for the transaction's sake. It's what it represents. It's the ceremony of it. So it's like getting married on, on your wedding day and it's one and done. And it's so understood within you that you don't have to get married every day. You can renew your vows, right? When we talk about, when people say to me, you know, Dee, Dee how how often do I do a technique or or how long do I do it? How, how much do I have to do it? It's when you're so present, like on your wedding day, that you know that everything went down, <laughs> everything you needed to do to uh, let everyone else know, including yourself, that you are now a married couple. Um, it's like that. It's it's about being so present in that day, right? And and let's let's say, for example, on that day, you are really present. You're getting dressed differently. You're having people around you acting differently, right? There's no doubt in your mind because it's such a day that stands out 
that you've done all that you need to do in order to meet the fulfillment, to meet the requirements, to meet the rules of engagement of that ritual. So that's what we're bringing here for you when we talk about imaginal acts and techniques, but none of that matters unless you're centered within yourself. So you could have a big, full-blown $100,000 wedding with all the dresses and all the tuxedos and the fancy venue and all the amazing food, or you can gather a few people together, go down to the justice of the peace and have a simple ceremony. It doesn't matter what the ritual is. It doesn't matter what the technique is. It matters how much you're activated, aligned, and anchored to what you're doing. So let's take a few moments, get out your notebook. This is episode nine in our deep dive into the now series, and we are going to call it eliminating resistance. There's a resistance that doesn't even really exist. And that's why manifesting can be a paradox sometimes, because to the subconscious mind, it doesn't exist. But to the conscious mind that wants to come in and have, it's not that it wants to have control because it wants to be controlling. It just wants to give you, the user, you, the, 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 the character, a pathway of understanding, a pathway of movement through this 3D physical world. Okay, so the conscious mind is our friend. The subconscious mind is our friend. The subconscious mind doesn't need to be impressed. It's already impressed. You do not have to impress your subconscious mind every day to beat your heart. It already knows whether you think about beating your heart or not. It's already active. It does, you don't have to, to impress your subconscious mind to digest your food. It's doing it for you, right? So those things that your subconscious mind is automatically doing, let it do it. You don't have to waste any more time or energy trying to did I impress the subconscious mind? Did I do it enough? That's why these questions come up. This is where the resistance is because you, your conscious mind doesn't know really what's going on. It doesn't know that bigger picture, right? It's not the CEO. Your subconscious is your CEO. That's where the trust level comes in. And when you realize that all that's needed in the now moment is for you to make a choice. That's all manifestation is. Simplify. That's why it's simple, easy, and fun. You make a choice. When you make a choice, the rest of the 3D world knows how to react. Let's use a real simple example. You go into Baskin Robin, there's 31 flavors. You choose, think about all the level of choices here. You choose that you want some ice cream. You choose that you're going to go to Baskin Robbins to get it. You walk into the store. There's all the options, not only are there 31 flavors, but then there's all the variety of how those flavors can be delivered to you. Do you want it on a cone? Do you want it in a milkshake? Do you want it in a bowl? What kind of cone do you want, right? And we can go on and on and on and on and on. But you are a master chooser because real quickly with billions of choices, right? Billions of choices. When you walk in the store, you don't even realize how many choices you have. You make the first big choice is what flavor do you want? And then after you make that choice, then you decide how do you want it? And when you give the order to the person behind the counter, they don't have to go through the billions of choices. You've given them through your command an inspired action to take to return to you what you've asked for. That's how simple manifestation is, but I think it gets tricky to the conscious mind because the difference in our example is that you have a 3D human person responding to your command. I want you to realize that when you give a command within your mind, within your consciousness, and there's not a 3D person to fulfill it or a computer to fulfill it, it's happening just as if, and you can create that invisible assistant. That's why I named my subconscious mind Mimi and my conscious mind Bob. And we have meetings. I've said this before. We have meetings because I create a ritual or a ceremony or a transaction, just like if Mimi and Bob were working at Baskin Robbins and they were going to deliver me my ice cream. So when you start to play with imagination, it's about being a little kid again. It's about having imaginary friends again. We'll get into all those topics. I wish, again, I can't put all the topics in just one topic, but I really want to get back on track for our topic of eliminating resistance because there is none. But I wanted to kind of give that example. You're not in survival mode anymore. 
you're well taken care of. If you need some foundational energetic assumptions to base your reality on, I have created a course. It's in the description box below and you can name your price. If you want to get it for a buck, you can get it for a buck. You want to pay a hundred bucks, a million bucks, whatever you feel the value is for you. It helps you. You can borrow mine until you've created your own. And it teaches you how to go into each one, one a day and anchor it in. Activate it, align it and anchor it, anchor it in. Because it's a little ceremony that you do each day so that you know when you now say, I am the star of my universe, you truly mean it. It's not just words. You don't have to repeat the affirmations. If you love affirmations, knock your socks off, repeat them for a million times. I'm not going to tell you not to. You do what works for you. That's what manifestation is all about. But what I'm here to do is to help you cut butt in front of the line. I'm here that if something in affirmations is going to take you six months to do, we can do it in a month here with doing a ceremony, right? We are really cutting down the hang time of manifestation and we're activating so many different things that you're not fixated on just one or two things. You have a whole bunch of things activated, right? But so let's go into the elimination of resistance. Okay. So what is resistance is we could call it a couple of different things. It's been said a couple of different ways. So I'm going to touch on all of them right here for you. Resistance is you creating unnecessary obstacles or blocks. And most likely you don't even realize that you're doing it, but you're doing it. And I, I believe the Neville Goddard quote says something like this. The only reason why you don't see what you're asking for instantly is because you don't believe in it. And it's not even so much believing in it, um, we could say allowing it to happen, right? Not having a contradicting thought to it. So as I said in episode three, when I put an echo out there that says, hello, I expect the echo of hello back. I don't expect the echo to say goodbye or who the hell are you? I expect exactly what I command. And I'm present and aware in the now moment that as I put out a command, if there is a little bit of turnover time, and my mind is still giving me the old echoes of the opposite of what I command or something different than what I command, I just go deeper in that now moment and reaffirm and revise, right? We've, we've talked about revision, uh, especially on this channel. There's plenty of videos about revision on this channel. Okay. So, and, and I've given the examples of where, you know, if you love working with chakras, you this beautiful system your mind has created, even though you feel like it's delivered from somebody else that introduced you to it. There's this beautiful chakra system. And I even created two videos. It's in the live section of, of the uh, channel of how you can use the chakra system as a hidden roadmap for manifestation. So if you haven't seen those videos, check those out. But you create this chakra system and there are these wheels of energy. And when they're spinning and they're active, and, and, it, and the system tells you all the things that you can get from the root chakra and the sacral chakra and so on. And then we say, oh, but since that's not happening, my chakras must be blocked. And we create blocks in our story. So you create something to help you. And then you believe that this thing that you've created, because you've it's all you, this is all your story. Now it can block you because you're coming off of a, a reality that says, I have to work hard. And that would be creating a block for you to overcome within your own mind is from a reality that has to work hard. It's a symptom of a reality that you have to work hard in order to get your outcome that um, you have to sacrifice. So again, you have to give up something to get something, right? If you're coming, if that's the reality you're coming from, then your chakra system will make you sacrifice things in order to get the goal. And the example, the analogy, because you know, I'm the queen of analogies that I always give is if you are creating blocks in your world, this is what a real life analogy would be like. You go and you buy a car, a car that you need to get to work, to get around, to do all the things. You love this car, you bring it home, right? It's, just, it's like creating the chakra system or whatever system that you're operating in that, that speaks to you. So you bring this car home, you get it into your driveway, and then you slash all your tires because that would be considered like a block in a, in a chakra system. Here's this thing that's supposed to help me add on to my life. Now, let me make it hard for myself because what? I don't feel deserving. What uh, Things have to be hard. I have to sacrifice. I have to overcome obstacles. And you slash your own tires. And then you bitch and moan about it. 
Why are my tires slashed? How did this happen? Well, you you did it. You did it. It would be pretty obvious that you were doing it as you're doing it. But that's what we do at the mental level. So if you're going to play at the mental level, you got to leave 3D reality alone. Because if you are at the mental level of creation, things can happen faster here than they can in the 3D reality. The 3D reality needs time for that thing to switch over if that if that is where you're playing. If you're playing at the mental or the energetic level, it doesn't need a lot of time. But if you are a human being having a human experience, this is what you have to do, right? When we're taking you out of that, we're putting you into the mental level that says, all I have to do is choose, okay? If you want a BMW X5, choose it right now or whatever your car is, choose it. All right, now that's it. That's it, folks. That's all you have to do is choose it. No resistance. You now have your car. Now, what's the first thing that came into your echo chamber? No, I don't. Where is it? I don't have the money for it. I have to get the money for it. That'll never happen. What do I do? How do I get, how does it show up? What do I got to do? All those questions, every single question is resistance. That's the tricky part about this. When you say something, and I want you to imagine you're a mom to a three-year-old or you're a dad to a three-year-old. When you tell the three-year-old, go to bed, it's nighttime, right? You And you, you say it really nice and sweet the first time, go to bed, it's nighttime. Why? Because you know that they need their rest. You know they need their rest. And plus it's nighttime and we're wrapping up the day, right? There's always reasons and stories as to why the three-year-old has to go to bed. It doesn't matter whether you need a break or they need a break or you both need a break or it's the end of the day. It doesn't matter what the reason is. It's just part, it's a story. So you you take the three-year-old up, you you bathe them, you brush the teeth, you read the story, you tuck them in, you turn out the light, you go back down because now you're going to do whatever you need to do. And the three-year-old comes back downstairs. And you say to the three-year-old, nope, go to bed, go to bed. And you're commanding your reality. But if you're not centered when you command the reality, the three-year-old in your story feels where you are and is reflecting. Maybe you have some doubts that you don't spend enough time with them. Maybe you really would like to go to bed yourself. Whatever the wobble is within you, you are not anchored into what you're commanding and the reality will reflect it back. So we can get to that point where we holler at the reality, but really by the time the three-year-old comes down 10 times, when you're to that point, get to bed now. I always love to add now to the end of my commands. When you add that there, as this bobble back and forth is going, all that's happening is that interaction is getting you to the point of conviction where you mean what you mean and you don't need to explain yourself. You don't need to explain yourself. I've gotten that what, that way many times with people in my reality, with the animals in my reality. And all I realized from my standpoint is if I was at that level of conviction without needing to, to raise my voice, but if I was at that level of conviction first, all that in-between stuff wouldn't have happened. So when my kids were younger and I would say to them, it's bedtime, before I made my command, I made sure that I was complete in all of our interactions within our day, that there was there was nothing left for us to do, no stone unturned. And when I got to that place of conviction, bedtime went a lot smoother. I also, as they got older, had to do the same thing with morning routines in waking them up because having five different children and five different personalities. But I learned where I needed to be in order to have a smooth sailing of interacting with my outside world. It wasn't conditioning me, I was conditioning it. So we got to let go of these stories that I come from this reality where I was conditioned to this. That version of you stays in that reality condition, it never leaves. You now are saying, I'm not the one conditioned. Reality is conditioned to me. I am not conditioned to reality. That's a huge shift. So now where you can relieve resistance 
And this is this is the easiest way, folks. I'm giving you everything I got. No hidden secrets here. You go into your zero point, where we hear that before, before you command. Whether you're doing three deep breaths, three minutes at zero point, six minutes, nine minutes. We haven't gotten to the six or nine yet. We'll get there. Because the deeper you go into the now and you center and there's no thought, there's no contradiction, there's no explanation. I do not explain myself to anyone. Dude, when I make a choice and I've chosen what I've chosen, I don't care how much resistance comes. Now, if there's some questions, I pay attention to the questions asked of me because the first time, maybe even the second time, I see it as my mind trying to really understand, does it understand what I want? Do I understand what I want? But no more than that. And especially if I know that I've commanded from a point of conviction and authority, don't even come to me the first time. Because I know who I am. I know what I want. And I'm not going to let a mind decide for me whether I need it or something else. So how I would speak to that is this. If I wanted to experience being a millionaire, and I have, I don't want my mind concerned as if it could, that I could lose it. Give me the opportunity to have it. And if I lose it, then I lose it. But that's on me. That's on my choices in the now moment. I don't want some invisible mind telling me you don't get what you ask for, you get what you need. I'm calling bullshit on that. That's a story that keeps you trapped in a reality that you don't want. And that's a story that dream characters that have had that experience are now projecting onto you. Because either you're the creator of your reality or you're not. And if you don't think you are, then those are the kind of realities you're going to get. Because it takes a little bit of uh, courage on your part to step into these new realities, to say, this is who I am. Because you're not taking away from others. The others will transform when you decide, just like that three-year-old. If I had that three-year-old that was giving me trouble going to bed, it wasn't the three-year-old. It was me. Whatever was going on within me was causing that, and it's immediate. If you want to hear stories about... Um, immediate changes. I did a revision technique where I realized my thoughts and my energy and my state of being were changing flight times home in real time. And by the third time it happened, I realized I was doing that because I really didn't want to leave where I was at because I was enjoying myself so much. And it wasn't until I shifted within myself that the, the flight start, stopped changing. So when you start to realize all there is is now, and the now is so malleable that it is actually reacting to you in real time. But most of the time, the room or the environment looks exactly the same because it wants you to be comfortable. It wants you to be at a state of equilibrium so that you can make clear conscious choices. So there is no wobble. There is no resistance. When you make a choice, and that's your choice. I've used the example many times of going into a restaurant, ordering a meal. When you make a choice, and that's exactly what you want, the waiter or waitress knows what to go back and place the order, the people in the kitchen know what to make, and they know what to deliver you in a short amount of time. But if you kept changing your mind every two minutes, everybody else is going to get their meal, and you're not going to have any food. It's really that simple. So if you believe that you are experiencing resistance, you are the one that's putting it there. And even if you say, but I wouldn't do this to myself, I hear that a lot also in our sessions that I have with my clients. I know that consciously you would not do that to yourself, but you're doing it unconsciously. So now that you're becoming consciously aware that there's resistance, how do you eliminate it? You let it go. You let it go. And you go back into zero point and you choose again and you trust your reality to deliver it to you. And no matter how big you think it is, no matter how long you think it'll take, it can change like that. How can it change like that? Start going in and activating many things at once, right? 
So if I want this YouTube channel to explode 10 times bigger, and every time I go into my analytics and, and my YouTube studio and I look, and it just seems like it's creeping along, if I believe in that reality, I can't get to the unfolding and the visualization and the real 3D reality of it being 100,000 subscribers, even though I know that's what I've commanded. So what do I do? Wherever I am right now is what's happening. And, and that's where what's happening is what's happening. That's the other point I wanted to make. And I'm glad I brought myself back around to it. See what happens, like what's yours and what you want to say. This is why I don't script my videos because I know what needs to come out will come out. So if all that's ever happening is in the now and there are birds chirping and I'm hearing these birds chirping, but maybe I don't want these birds chirping. So the more I'm saying to myself, I don't want the birds chirping. I want total silence. It's I can't meditate with the birds chirping. But that's all, that's what's happening in this reality. The very fact that I'm focusing on the birds chirping, all my mind hears is birds chirping. So it continues to have the birds chirping. It doesn't know I don't want. It doesn't know stop this. It doesn't know this is annoying me. I'm giving it attention. So what do I do? I go give something else attention. I take the attention off. I allow what's happening to happen. I could even go in and say, oh, wow, that's lovely. I love that. That's beautiful. And you'll feel that shift within yourself. Or if I didn't want to do any of that, I just go into ground zero. I just start deep breathing and making the, the noise out of my mouth, the more than what the birds are. I want to take you into an experience here. We're going to, it's going to do it real quick because most of the time we're just going to be doing those three deep breaths. And what I want you to pay attention with the three deep breaths today, I want you to really, I want you to hold a little bit longer the breath. So maybe four or five seconds, but don't make it a short account. I just want you to hold your breath a little bit longer than you normally do. So I want you to see the breath in as a choice. I want you to see and, and understand the holding of the breath as resistance, right? Because you chose to breathe in, which means there has to be a breath out, but you can choose to hold it, right? And we did that in the second episode of hold your breath. We kept increasing how long we hold it. But when you hold that breath again today and you feel the resistance within your chest cavity, I want you to see that it is a choice that you're making to release the resistance. So you chose an outcome. You commanded your reality, the breath in. You chose to hold. And now you're choosing to release. And how each choice brings you a different experience in the now, in your reality. And all you have to do is make a different choice. And in that choice and following through with that choice, releases all resistance. So we're going to do this three times. Remember to hold a little bit longer on the hold. Get ready. In one, two, three. First breath in through the nose. Hold. Release. And again. One more time. So it's fun to take that deep breath in because that shows you how powerful you are. It's fun to hold your breath because it lets you know that you truly are the one in charge. And it's awesome to let go of the breath because you're teaching yourself that when you make a choice and something causes resistance, you have the power to release that in that you have the power to release that resistance like that. Resistance only exists if you are not activated, aligned, and anchored to your choice, meaning that your choice is your choice. You don't care about any other choice. Nothing else is going to come in and make you choose differently. And that's why we have these ceremonies. So think about going back to our wedding example. 
you're choosing to go from single person consciousness to married person consciousness. And most likely you've been living married person consciousness without the actual piece of paper, whether you live together or not, you've chosen long before you walk down that aisle to not be with any other people. And then when you have that day and all the pomp and circumstances that go with it, at the end of the day, you take vows. So does your partner. And now not only you know it, but all of your community knows that you are a married person and to treat you as such, as a married couple, as a married individual. But when you go out into your bigger world, not everyone may be aware of that. That's why we wear rings to symbolize because most people know what those rings symbolize. But let's say it's a day for some reason you didn't put your ring on because you were in a hurry or maybe it's getting cleaned or whatever's going on, right? There's always a story. And someone comes to you and makes you an offer that they would make to a single person. There's nothing wrong. Offers are always going to be made out there in the 3D and in your mind. It is a thought offering. But it, it now is your choice. What consciousness do you want to embody? What consciousness do you want to see play out? Because even though you've done all of that, it is still your choice in the now moment, whether you continue to act as a married person or go back into acting like a single person. There's no resistance. It's just a choice. And if you were to make a choice to go back into your singlehood, then there's wobble in the embodying of being married. And that's all the now moment is, is to let you know, based on your choice, what script you want to play out, because the reality will always say yes to your choice. And the choice is always yours. So there is no resistance unless you're bringing it in. And when it seems like there's resistance, get excited because it's showing you that you are at the precipice of two different realities and all your mind wants to know is which one do you want? Which, which program do I keep playing for you to act out? That's all there is in every single now moment because what's happening is what's happening. And when you're clear and present in the now moment, you don't question what's happening because if someone comes in, it makes you an offer to go out on a date and they didn't know you were married and even if they did, if they did know, it doesn't matter what their actions are. It comes back down to you and your choice right here, right now. Because you're also going to see that saying yes to the married reality is resistance to acting like you're single again. Or if you do act if you're single again, you're giving resistance to your married reality. So there's always going to be some re reality getting resistance based on your yes or no choice. It's just, again, coming down to you being the creator which one do you, as the, the, the conscious version of you in this now moment, what, ver what reality do you want to act out in this play, this day? I just got here. I got one day as the, the main character to take this reality to where I want it to be. It may be different than yesterday's character and tomorrow's character can come in and make different choices than what I did. But this is what I'm doing. And this is why you today are not held responsible for the versions of you prior because you can revise your character and take him or her to a whole new level. And that's why anything can change just like that. So guys, thank you so much for being here. I want to remind you one more time, we are having a three-day challenge in our community, the Invincible CEO Circle, where we have so much fun manifesting. It is a three-day go figure, revision challenge. We're going to revise your past. We're going to go live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for an hour in the group. It's a Zoom session so that you'll get to be on screen and ask questions. It's very different than when we go live on the YouTube channel. And I'm so excited to get to see you there face-to-face. -face. So if you haven't signed up for our group, do so now. You'll also get access to last month's challenge, which was the Funny Money Manifestation Challenge. And our our participants are having money come in. I know I am. So I would like to have you have that same wonderful experience. And if you haven't gotten on my calendar yet, what are you waiting for? Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation all about you 
to get you to experience all the wonderfulness of the unfolding of your wish fulfilled. And I do have another gift today at 2 p.m. Another client of mine has taken some wonderful time to have a conversation with me, sharing her wonderful journey of us working together. That drops today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you are loving these episodes, come back tomorrow at noon for the next one. On your screen, you will see the playlist of the all the other episodes that you may have missed. And again, they don't have to be done in any certain order, but it does help. And there's also the playlist of all of our previous client wins. So enjoy, enjoy your day, and I'll see you next time.